welcome to July. June was a crazy month. We had a couple of Wednesdays that were over 2,000 people on the door counter. So, I mean, literally it wasn't 2,000 people, but it was a lot of people. And that's like the first time we've had two 2,000 on the door counter in like one month. And so we did end up with over 3,000 more this year than last year in June. Wow. Yeah. So it was a lot. Um, so summer reading is going strong. Just to update you a little bit, um, summer reading started on July 1st. The program started with Touch Truck on July 17th, or June, I'm sorry, change all that to June. Um, the first concert, family concert, was um, June 19th, and we just had our fourth one, I think. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. And they've been getting about two to 300 people at each one, wow. which is crazy, I know. Yeah, that would be an average. <clears throat> like today was 193, did mm -hmm. you say? Even though it was like threatening rain outside. <laughs> so they're very well yeah. attended, you know. Um, the other things that I've um, really seen an uptick in attendance are the um, art labs that happen on Wednesdays. I don't know what today's was like, but one day we had like 112 attendees. So we have to break it down into like three or four half hour sessions repeat because only so many people can come set up at the tables that are set up in the community room. So those have been going just great. Um, let's see, other programs, I'm just skipping down to programs. Um, we've also had our second um, BAM Art Lab, and that stands for Because Accessibility Matters. And these were created primarily to um, provide programming for adults with intellectual disabilities, but uh, adults with any disability is um, invited to come to this. And we've also had, um, as you know, we have an advisory council that we started to um, ask people like how we can better meet the needs of adults with disabilities of any sort. And since that's such a broad range, we really need to hear from a lot of people to understand that. So um, today, Gina provided a, oh, uh, I'm stealing Ken's thunder, um, provided a request to the friends, but I will talk about her request to the foundation. Um, oh, now I'm stealing Th Cynthia's thunder. Um, I just wanna let you know, Gina is planning a community-wide read next probably gonna be the end of February as it turns out. And I'll let those guys tell you more about what um, the support the friends and the foundation are providing for that. And um, we also received our second distribution of funding from the library district. We always get one big one and then one small one at the end of the year when all the tax money has been collected. And we got $92,000 over what what we expected they also they always are very conservative in their estimate which is awesome because then our budgeting can be based on very conservative numbers and then if it comes out to be more we're lucky so that means um if we want that to go towards something in this current fiscal year though we have to go in and talk to finance and make a budget amendment because you know that's already been approved for the coming for the coming year so we can do that and then um, i did want to let you know that Canby Library um, and the city of Canby want to talk to us about our service area because our service area, the Oregon City Library service area, actually incorporates a corner of the Canby School District. And it's the Karis Elementary area. So Karis Elementary is in the Canby School District. So they would love to see that move over to the Canby service library service area but that is um would really impact our funding so more to come i just want you to be aware of that though um we're training a bunch of new on calls and so um it's been kind of crazy because the person who trains the on calls also trains the volunteers so at a time when we need like lots of volunteers working in the library she's unavailable to train the volunteers which is the when we get on calls is just kind of like when we need them so but next year we're going to try and do that a little bit more ahead of think about that a little bit more ahead of summer because it's a lot going it makes for a lot going on in the summer and um we also are starting to 
um, advertise like within our staff for um, them to apply for those 15 hour a week dedicated on-call positions so that Gina Barrett, Aaron, Denise and I will have like people that are on calls, but we can just say to them, okay, this is your schedule. These are your duties. And I get to direct you within that. Like the on calls are typically go on desks and um, work for Katrina basically in circulation. And this will give them duties elsewhere and then we'll backfill them with more on calls. Um, and then in the future, I mean, I think it might be possible that we would be able to afford to hire more permanent positions, but I think where that support is needed most is what needs what we need to take time and think about before we like start advertising and hiring people. And I'd kind of like the next director to be in charge of, of doing that. Um, Cause it's nice to come into a, a position like that with a little bit of money that you can squish around a little bit and then maybe refocus your energies. And I would like somebody else to, to have <laughs> that possibility. Um, any questions about statistics now? This is the year end. June, the end of June is the end of our fiscal year. So there are, uh, sorry for these, um, the blue, if you printed it out in color like I have, I need to change those colors, they're too dark. Um, but we did have 17,000 more people coming through our door counter this year than last year. So we're up to 437, almost 438,000 people a year. Um, our patron registrations are up over 20,000. Our um, total loans is at 543, almost 544,000. And the growth of the, um, that was about only 8,000 more than last year, but the growth of that 8,000 was almost, almost all in eBooks, which is very interesting. And we know that eBook circulation has ebook and um, e audiobook has gone up and what we did as a consortium those purchases come out of the network office they come out centrally those are done centrally and what we did is as a group we went back and looked at our databases and we have stopped subscribing to the least used databases and we put all that money towards more e content since that's the, a big area of growth for the county um, and databases are never really heavily used. Very, very few of them are heavily used, so it wasn't too painful at all. In fact, our reference librarians were like, yeah, we don't even care. It's just, so it's like you got to focus on what people are using and what, they'll, what they need and what they'll use. Um, in other statistics, our... Um, what else did I want to bring to your attention? Those were the main ones. Oh, the... Um, Things that we borrow versus things that we loan throughout the county, that improved by like 24,000 total. And that means that we borrowed um, less and lent more. So that is, as you know, is something that we want to keep an eye on and make sure that that keeps improving. And so that reflects on our collection and how well we contribute to um, circulation in the entire county. So uh, since the numbers are up, why is the uh, self-check transactions down? That seemed odd to me. Well, it just means that um, more people are checking out by with staff. Okay. Yeah, instead of um, on the self-check machines. For Maybe whatever. new users are more comfortable with checking out through staff than using the machine? I think if they see somebody there, it's they just go use that person that's there. So yeah, not only that in June we had half off lines. Yeah. And you have to be helped at the desk for that. Yeah, you have to that's right. So did you hear what she said? Sure. In June, um, for the whole week of our anniversary, we have half off fines. So oh, you know I see. and then you ha you have to go to go a to desk, desk in order to like get that kind of help. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was just a curiosity. Yeah. Given all the other numbers, you know. Yeah, and that's kind of one of those things that as long as it's like up at a pretty high percentage, um, you know, like between 70 and 80% at least, then I'm fine with it. It doesn't have to be like 100%, you know, that people use self-checks, but um, it's kind of funny how they do use it or not. Um, sometimes because it's like novel, they might even use it more when it was newer. I don't know. I mean, who knows how people think about these things. 
Anyway, any questions about statistics or report? Libraries hopping. Was there anything you could identify that increased the use of the cultural passes? I noticed yes. the difference between this yes, year and last. Yes, it's now almost all online. Uh -huh. um, if just for one is not online? Just the state parks. The state parks. So that makes it so much easier because you don't have to like get it back to the library by a certain time. Um, it just, yeah, the, the statistic is really huge. It's like twice as much. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not unexpected because, yeah, that just makes... It was it was such an awkward system before, and we're are we working on something with the state parks or not? Yeah, um, one of the other counties is doing a trial with them to see if it would work on doing paper. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? All right, uh, move on to uh, the update of the strategic plan objectives. Okay. Okay, let's see here. I've got my stuff in out of order. So I sent you two things. I sent you um, the full strategic plan with notes written in, and then which this document. And then I sent you a list of the goals in chronological order, which now I've created that list and we can hang on to it for <laughs> the next five years because it was really awkward to make. But um, that one's pretty much easier to read than the, but it's also not in the same order because I didn't get it in the right order. So starting with Create Young Readers. Um, we're getting more people on, hopefully you've gone through this, but we're getting more people on the educator card, but this was like, basically, it's only been a year old, not even a year. So this year we have 70 people signed up for the educator card. So next year, we'll, our number to shoot for will be 77 because we're looking for that 10% increase. Um, all the public schools in Oregon City got one visit from library staff encouraging summer reading signups. Um, I'm not sure if Barrett was able to reach out to all the private schools. Um, and then the next one, I really am pleased about this. If by 2024, all first grades will visit the library at least once a year, Barrett already had uh, reached out to all the first grade teachers this year and all the public schools sent their first graders except for Gaffney Lane, which sent their kindergartners because that's just what they've been doing. And so this year, the, the kindergartners got to come and next year they'll come as first graders, so they'll get it twice. And then we'll be sticking with first graders from now on out. So um, she did reach out to private schools, but none of them responded on that. But you know that, um, what's the Catholic school right by us? St. John's. St. John's Apostle. They send all their grades. So just so you know, we do have the private school showing up at the library. They send all their grades like once a month, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're wow. amazing. Yeah. They're amazing. Okay. Going on. Um, so by 2020, staff will reach out to the schools and other groups. We've gone to Head Start. And after doing some story times at Head Start, Barrett thinks that a better thing to do would be to attend family nights at Head Start so that she could actually connect with the parents. Um, and then that's probably also going to be the partnership that she uses to provide library services to the underprivileged or at-risk youth. Um, let's see here. Actually, this is going to take forever if I do this this way. How about if I just go through my list that like, I know is 2019 ones? Okay. Um, all right, in 2019, we will have a methodology for equal opportunities for all union represented staff for um, staff development, I believe that is. And we gave $1,000 to each represented staff and said, you get to decide what you're gonna do this year as far as professional development and they have started using those funds and they kind of have to let us know what those are ahead of time and what they'll get out of it, and then they can do that. Um, that includes that next one as well. 
Um, policy review schedule, that's coming up today, as long as well, uh, in addition to the collection development policy, that's gonna get done today. Um, 2019, the library director will provide disability training to at least one staff. And that was done and that was shared and that was the foundation for our um, BAM um, programming that will continue on. So that provided the foundation for that. Um, we have got the laptops and they are available for checking out. Um, book bundles and book group support is happening. Elevated readers are meeting. Um, displays are happening, although we did get complaints about, two complaints about um, Pride Month display. So that was very interesting. And we let them know that, and they were in the adult area. So, it is what it is. We're not gonna take them down. Um, we um, regularly take our worn and outdated materials out of the collection. That is done like constantly. And here's one on connecting with service organizations. And we do work with um, the optimists. We get a donation from them annually. And Rotary, instead of giving their guest speakers some dumb little gift that their guest speaker doesn't want, they donate one book to the library every week in honor of that guest speaker. So we get a lot of children's books out of them and have gotten a lot out of them over time. Yeah. Is there a book plate or something put in there? Yep, there's a book plate put in there, yeah. Um, we had two staff complete the next leaders program. That was Denise and Gina. We have started offering technology classes, organized technology classes. Um, okay, here's one that we aren't really doing. Staff will learn about the role of marketing in library. Uh, eh. <laughs> um, oh, here's one. In the fall of 2019, an annual report will be created and provided to the community. Great idea. Um, how about we do that for the next director? That's what I'm thinking. Because <laughs> we're going to be in the middle of recruiting a new director, and my son's wedding is happening. And realistically, you know, I just don't see this happening. So we might want to put that off to 2020. I think it's an excellent idea to take the year-end information and the um, summer reading program, once it's ended, that information and put something together in the fall. Um, I mean, I won't totally ditch that idea, but I'm just saying. Um, we have also not started doing a very good job of providing paper or online evaluations for our programs. So we need to look at that. And this is why I want to, like, this is very helpful to me to see what we have and have not, like, done. Um, we do have a community information spot in the library. And there are guides, brochures, and pamphlets from areas, agencies, and organizations there. Um, I already went through the educator card. The staff will investigate and analyze options among national programs, which partners with groups like libraries to place books in the homes of young children. So the foundation and the library have um, taken steps towards the Dolly Parton Foundation, um, Dolly Parton Imagination Library. So we haven't signed up for it yet, but they have committed to three years in that program, which is gonna end up being like $44,000 a year when it's all said and done. So it's a huge commitment. Um, did that. And we need to start a system of reviewing statistics for figuring out appropriate um, staffing levels, like which statistics we're looking at. Then I'm not gonna keep on going through that. That's, that's 2019. So really we've done a very good job on getting started on all the goals in 2019. We've also started on a bunch of things that are due in 2020. And, um, and then we've also done some things that are not due until 2021 and 2024. So I think like really holistically looking at this, we're doing a pretty good job. And that I also think that the next director probably wants to look at 2020 because like, if you look at the chronicle, chronological list of things due in 2020, it's massive. Mm -hmm. It's like frightening. So I really think that, you know, that needs to go back. Somebody needs to go back and look at that and kind
kind of sort out what are the priorities, what's logical as far as order of things getting done, mm -hmm. and what builds on what else, and then reorder that stuff again, which is why this is a living document. The other thing that I noticed going through here, which was super annoying to me, because I helped write it, was like half of it is like by 2020, and the other half of it is in 2020. And it's like, okay, by 2020 means you're doing it in 2019, right? Mm -hmm. So I recommend that's one change that we just go ahead and make. Um, and that if it says like by 2020, we just say in 2020, um, unless it's like already done or something. So would you guys be agreeable with that? Because it, it puts it down the road just like a few more months. And then, I mean, this can all get shifted around anyway. Would you be all right with that? Because yeah. it's so inconsistent yeah, this way. Was yeah. that the intent when we said why that we meant during? I, I, I don't remember. I don't really remember either. But yeah, well, but it means better like. Better to move it ahead than beyond. Yeah, I would, I, yeah. We're going to look a lot better if we move it ahead. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you for that. There's a lot to focus on in the last few months of the year, I imagine. Yeah, well. there's a lot to so. focus on. And and yeah, when you look at it in chronological order, all of a sudden you're just like, ah, that's terrifying. And when you're writing it out at the time, you're kind of just like pulling dates from the air anyway. So this helps you take another look at it and make a, make a little bit more sense of it, I think, as well. So, OK, that's great. So that's what I've got for strategic plan update. Any questions on that? Very complete. Great. Okay. Move on to the review of collection development policy policy review plan. All right. So um, let's look at the policy review plan first of all. Um, what I did was I pulled up our list of policies and I found out when our last dated um, version was. And starting with the um, things that were dated the oldest, which is not too bad, really. Um, I put them out, the proposed plan is at the bottom of the page as getting done first. So that would be mandatory reporter, the bulletin board policy. That will take us about two seconds to look at that. Partnership policy, we've never actually had one. We have a draft one. So that's going to take another look at. And then in addition to the collection development policy, which we're going to look at tonight. So that those would be three more policies that would get done this year. And then um, we'd move along so that each year has you know, like next year we'll have three, the following year would have two, but one of them was the behavior one, which is always takes like a really hard look. And then uh, 2022, we'd like come back to the collection development policy um, and the same one, the other ones that we just did this year. Um, the technology policy, did I miss that? Technology. Oh, no, we just did it. So that's why it doesn't come back up until 2022. So that's what that's what would start like a rotation of like every three years, at least things would get looked at. Does that look okay to you? I mean, I think that's actually really pretty good. Yeah. And then if there's more policies that get written, we can like pop them in there according to what they need. So there's that. And now that I'm thinking about that, let's see here. One thing in the collection development policy on, uh, let's see here, that we need to change. The very last thing before the um, appendices, appendices start says that the library board will review this policy every two years. I just put it on a schedule of every three years with my other plan. So I kind of think every three years is realistically more like what's going to happen. And that's what happened with this. This last, this last version was 2016. So, I mean, I think that's often enough. So that would be another change that I would make to this with your approval. Makes sense, yeah. Okay. I just noticed that, right? Yeah. We can't have it saying two different things, right? 
Okay, so in this collection development policy, the first thing starting at the beginning is I went through and I updated the statistics on the front. And then going down to the library vision and mission, I updated that because we have a new strategic plan and we redid those portions of it. So those are just updated. And then um, nothing really changes until we get down to the principles of collection development. And we wanted to go into more detail about um, withdrawing things out of the collection. Um, a little bit based on some of the things of what goes, what has gone on in other parts of the state as far as, like some people are just really shocked that we even do it, you know? Like that they don't understand that you have to constantly take things out of the collection to keep it like fresh and up to date. I mean, there seriously, there are a lot of people in the world who are just shocked that we get rid of books because they never think about how we get new books and there's only so much space and so some have to go away. It's kind of like your closet, you know? It's very much like your closet. Like if you never get new clothes, then fine. But if you do, it's gonna get crowded after a while. Mm -hmm. So the deselection process, or as we call it, is weeding, is really painful for some people to hear about. And as we know down in Salem Library, they've had a lot of um, very, um, interesting interaction with their um, interested library supporters about how that is done. It's not something that librarians typically want to be micromanaged about. What they really want to do is tell people out in the world, this is what we base our decisions on. And for instance, like we do our very best to buy a book that is of interest to people, but guess what? If that book ends up never circulating, even though it looks brand new, we will take it out of the collection and give it to the friends so that the friends can sell it and then the friends can support us with that income through a program or something, right? But it doesn't stay on our shelf. You know, you have to earn your space on the shelf. We cannot save everything because we're not archives. So that's really what this is attempting to, to help provide clarity on, which is why it's great to have you guys read it because we know what we do, but this is an attempt to explain it to people who don't know what we do. So. So there's a lot of criteria in there. Um, and then we also wanted to talk about digital resources, which this is on page four and it's in, it's in red on my copy, because we wanted people to understand that um, this is done centrally. We don't do it, but people could still give suggestions for it. And then a couple more things that changed here and there, just very few words like we, I don't even know where they are now. We added the fact that we have like a, um, oh, here we go, it's in green, you can't even see it. Spanish and Russian language materials for the children's area and that non-English materials will, they fall under the same policy. So we didn't really add a lot, we updated it and kind of explained a little bit more. Question? You look like you had a question, Cynthia. Well, I had a, a comment. I don't, sure. I'm not as, as a question, but on the um, the form that mm -hmm. you know uh, people can submit concerns about yeah. a library material. One of the things that I would have looked for if I were to do this, I, I and I don't know this if this happens and it wasn't just included here, but some outline of the process for me the objector, <laughs> okay, mm. so that they, me, I'm using myself as an example, I have no objections, I'm just, I'm just gonna use myself as a, as a fresh pair of eyes here, so that a, my, maybe a cover would go with this that says, here's the process, and that, so that I, I the, the citizen, understand what's gonna happen to my, my comments here, and I think also, if, if all humanly possible, as some kind of a timeline. So is somebody gonna look at this in 30 days or 60 days or right. whatever? I think, based on my previous experience, if there is a process that's clear to the patron, the mm -hmm. citizen, and there's a timeline, it goes a long ways to reduce hostility. Sure. Um, and so I would, I would recommend that in your, 
you know, in your process mm -hmm. of taking citizen comments on materials that might be considered objectionable by that individual, those two things be added. Sure. So that so that the patron can realistically expect to hear from mm -hmm. somebody, you yeah. know, in, in 60 days or 30 days, whatever seems reasonable, sure. you know. Um, but as it is, like, I, 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 I turned it over and I thought, well, where's the rest of it? Yeah, gotcha. You know, so. Yeah, no, we can definitely do that. And I'll, I'll need to look online and see what we even say online about that, you know, if there's any information at all. Um, I'm happy to add that. That would be really easy. I could take care of that in just a couple of sentences. I, yes, I didn't yeah. think it doesn't substantially change what no. you want to have happen. No. It just clarifies yep. to the citizen what is going to happen yep. and what's the reasonably expectation, reasonable expectation of time. Sure. So. And then just so you know what, it's been really interesting here in Oregon City. Um, we've, have we ever received a formal challenge? Like people rarely go to the point of like filling out that form. In fact, I don't think they ever have. What they do is they come talk to us, which is great because then That's we can good. have that conversation mm -hmm. about what is objectionable. And I think there's only been one time a mom came to, um, a parent came to a library board meeting and she, she was just, she was wonderful. She was like, I feel so bad complaining about this, but I just had to say da 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 da. And we're like, you have every right to complain about it. This is not a problem. We welcome your comments. And she was kind of floored by that attitude, but it's like totally fine with us. And sometimes people, who knows, they could be right about it. You know, you just never know, but you certainly want to hear. But we have only ever really had verbal complaints. So, but I like I like your idea a lot. Is, is it available online? That was yes. the other- This the form, form is available online, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. I. I didn't think to check before I came I didn't out. think so, to check either. So, so I will have to go look and see what it says. Okay. Yeah. Yep, happy to do that. Any other comments about this policy? The uh, freedom to read statement and the, yep. all that stuff. Um, I think normally there's a line in the policy that says these are part of the policy. And I didn't see it. Maybe I missed it in reading. Um, right down at the very beginning, intellectual freedom. It has that list on the very front page. Down here at the bottom. I, I see it here. Uh, Is freedom to read not missing? There's freedom to read. No, no, no. I, I think what I, what I saw as missing was a statement that these documents are a formal part of the policy. Oh, okay. As opposed to just an appendix. Oh, okay, gotcha. <clears throat> okay, I can happy to add that. These are great ideas. This is why I want other people to read these things. Mm -hmm. we, we like look at them and glass over because we're so used to looking at them. Mm -hmm. Do we have short time for an anecdote? Sure. Mm -hmm. I was on the library board in Pocatello and uh, we had an oral complaint from a patron mm -hmm. about the night kitchen, in the night kitchen. Mm -hmm. I think that's Sendak if I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, there's a naked boy in it. Mm -hmm. And we assumed that was what the objection was going to be. But when she actually made her objection, it was that the boy fell into the milk and she felt that was unsanitary that oh, they drank oh, the milk afterwards, which <laughs> <laughs> broke up the entire meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know what people are gonna complain. You never about. know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. Is there any other, uh... Comments or additions? Do we need to vote to approve this? Yeah, if you could move to approve it with the revisions, and I have three revisions. One, that these documents are a formal part of the policy, that this will get reviewed every three years, and that the um, there will be a process and a timeline given for the review of a um, complaint, whatever. We don't call it a complaint, but you know. Citizen so. concern? Yes. <laughs> I, I move yeah. acceptance with those changes. Second, second. Second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 aye.
All those opposed say no. And it's great, thank you. Now what I just said about getting the collection development, development policy passed when I had my previous item is now true, so I'm not a liar. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Now, uh, is that it for the that policies? That's it that, for the policy. Okay, we'll move on to item six, the preview of director recruitment. Preview, preview. Um, so did I send you guys that um, that chart of a timeline? Or just this? So. Okay, I'll send that to you. So um, I have a little chart that just kind of outlines basic steps, which is basically like in July, I'm gonna let the library board know that we need to start thinking about what they want to see in their next library director. We can have that conversation in August if we have that meeting. I did that today with the, um, the friends group and told them like they were, they were not wanting to have an August meeting and they said, well, that's fine, but we really need to talk about this because I want your feedback on this. I want your thoughts to be included on what the next library board director, what strengths, what skills, what traits they bring to this um, position. Um, so that will help us write the um, job recruitment information. So um, nothing else is on the calendar for our August meeting though. So I'm assuming you wanna talk about this, but it needs to get done before September is the thing. So, and we also have two members who are not missing mm -hmm. tonight who are not here. Right. So I'm assuming that we're gonna to have to go ahead and have our August meeting and we can talk about it at that point in time. But I wanted to give you guys the, the list at least of things that I think the next library director will be um, needing to work on. And I'm sure the list is much longer than that, but you know, things that kind of pop out for me, things I probably won't be getting to, you know, like the um, annual <laughs> news thing that I'm like, <laughs> statistical thing that I'm not doing. Um, so um, I've also have started talking to staff about this. We're gonna have a staff meeting dedicated to this in August, and we'll then be starting to develop like, well, what, what does the interview process look like? Um, we can talk about all those things in August and just be thinking about it and anything that you think that would at all be helpful. And, uh, if you don't want me to be here for a while because you're worried about hurting my feelings or something and saying like, well, we want to have such and such because, you know, Mo was really bad at that. That would be okay, too. I'm, I don't think I'm, that's going to happen. Well, yeah. I don't know. I'm actually not going to attend the staff meeting because I really want them to be free to say whatever they want about that. And sometimes you think about um, what you need in terms of what's missing, and it might make them feel uncomfortable to say that in front of me. So... Um, so that's what I, I really want you guys to be involved. It's, um, as the HR director said, it's really important to be involved up front because what goes out to recruit people will really shape who applies for the job. I don't think we're gonna have any problems um, getting applicants, but um, you know we wanna be sure that the applicants, it's a good pool that, are, is, that you have a lot to choose from that's right for Oregon City. And then we need to think about like, well, what is right for Oregon City at this phase in time? You know, having a new building, but having a big service area, all that stuff, you know? So, so that's this all, that's all that is. Good, important for the board to- And I think a little understanding of the external factors for the library. The library doesn't exist in a vacuum. And it there's lots not. of changes that are happening in Oregon City. And we probably need to have a little bit of discussion about what, what's our demographics gonna look like? And I think that mm -hmm. takes a little time. Mm -hmm. Well, I could uh, bring, get some demographic information and send that to you ahead of time. That could be part of the report for um, August, if that would be helpful. Um, well, like for instance, we have more kids between the age of zero and five than other areas surrounding us. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we have a lot more, that's still declining in numbers, but we have more than a lot of other places. So that can be more of an emphasis for us, at least right now. Um, we have a smaller Spanish population than like, let's say Canby, you know? So those are things that be, but what's growing and everything, I can, I can do that. I can get some demographics together. And I also, um, you know, you're absolutely right about the library not existing in a vacuum. Um, 
you know, I have to be very involved with the other libraries in the county. Um, and there's, you know, I have a foundation, I have a friends group. There's, there's a lot of little like layers and fingers here of groups of people that this person has to be um, good with at dealing with and a lot of people to get to know. So it's not, it's not an uncomplicated position. What, what is the average tenure of a library director? Any idea you. what that is? No, could not tell you. I could, five, you think five? You know I that for I think I fact? saw that. Really? So I've been here twice as long. Maybe, maybe that was a prescription that you should seek a new job at five years. <laughs> <laughs> but we were like halfway through the building at that point, I couldn't leave. Yeah. Um, I could try and find that out. But I have no not, idea. Don't go to a lot of okay. trouble about it, but just if you have some, you know, library data junkie that you could ask mm -hmm. <laughs> about that, I would just be curious because it, it does, are we, you know, it does impact, are, would we be thinking of hiring a person that's going to stay five years or 10 years? I mean, you know, in an ideal world or, yeah. or the real world, either way, you know, that, I think that does. Yeah, impact. well, I would encourage you to, Think about hiring somebody for um, probably at least, you know, four to five, unless they're really turn out really badly and then get rid of them immediately, you know, mm -hmm. um, because it's, uh, it's really hard on staff to go through those kinds of transitions. It's very hard on staff. And yeah. Uh, anticipating a little bit, where will this position be advertised? Well, I was only going to do a statewide advertisement um, because I think we have enough good candidates in state. I know like two that are going to apply already that either one of them I think would be very successful. So I think we have a lot of people to pull from. So that's what we were planning on doing through like the um, state listserv, job listserv and OLA and whatever HR uses, if that's okay with you guys. We, what I think probably what we'll have is people who maybe haven't been directors before, but have been at libraries as assistant director, a position like that, that they would, this would be a, a perfect next step for them. But I think we might have some library directors who are in smaller libraries that might look at this as the next step up because it's a little bigger. So, I mean, I, I could think of like five people that might apply. I know two definitely. Are any of them in their 20s? No, that's too young. You don't want somebody in your 20s. That's what I meant. That's yeah. just, your, your longevity at a, at a job, oftentimes, you, is because you, by the time you have enough experience to be really good at this, you're getting close to the end. That sounds so fatal. Rephrase that <laughs> to retirement age. Yeah. Well, I'm. Um, I think that there are people in their forties that would, you know, there are smart people in their forties who already have like fifteen years of library experience under their belt, and depending on what that experience is, they could be very well qualified. So. Well, and the skill set, if we really look at the strategic plan, that's why that strategic plan is really critical because that skill set might be different from what we needed from you, for example, to build a new life. Oh, absolutely. You and know, I, so, I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah that it's not a reflection on anybody's performance. No. It's just like, oh, we've moved into a different yep. era now. Yep. And I think that behooves us to really take a look at that strategic plan. Yeah, I think it does too. I really agree with you. and. Um, the one thing that I think is going to be a constant is you need somebody who can work with a lot of different kind of people in multiple groups because that's just the mm -hmm. way this is set up. So will we be able to hear what the staff says that they think? Um, yeah, I think what we can do is like put this into, um, a, you know, collate these ideas and put it into a document and certainly all going to go to HR. Yeah, I, I would be happy to share it with you. The way they did it at um, 
in Newburgh, which is my most recent experience and really kind of only experience with the director thing besides my own hiring, is they talked to their friends, their foundation, their library board, their staff, and got input like this from everybody. And they put that all together with a list of like, okay, what's coming up in this, this new director's work ex life um, in the library? What's coming up for the library? And then they really used that in the interview process to help the interviewers, like as they were asking, as we were asking questions, look back and say, okay, does this kind of match what's coming up in the future and what people want in a library director? I'd like to see that the trends, are there trends in, in the various groups that might have input to this process? Soft skills are good. You know. You know? Yeah, so, uh, so there, I, but I wouldn't know that that's a high priority for the staff unless I heard from the staff. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. it, what are the themes that might uh, you know, right. come to the surface? Well, you won't hear from the staff for a while. Their meeting won't be till the end of August. So they're meeting after you are meeting. Okay. Yeah. And the friends will be meeting the same day that you're meeting. So it'll take us a while to put that all together. And by that time, you know, we'll be like busy writing up the job announcement and stuff, but we'll be using that information to influence what we do. So. All right, so we'll move this uh, for the month of August and hopefully uh, all the members can be able to attend. That's yeah. very important. Yeah, and if not, I mean, please email me or mm -hmm. Scott or whoever, you know, with that information of your thoughts. All right, let's move on to uh, communications. Uh, Nick's not here. I don't know, was there an LDAC meeting? Mm -mm. No, no there was not. So, uh, Cynthia, you have a library foundation meeting? Right. Um, so we made <coughs> definite plans to move ahead with the Dolly Parton Imagination Library and a task and uh, who does it kind of uh, matrix was developed so we know who is going to be taking the next steps and the, the first set of next steps are for the application to be uh, filled out and that will be done by Karen and Mo. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have identified some just kind of know, common sense next steps um, about tasks to get the, get the project off the ground on its feet. But I think it's important to remember that We'll have sort of a, a soft opening, I guess, is, is what the term that we used, is that we don't need the entire population, zero to five, of Clackamas, you know, the Oregon City Library District, signing up for this project at the same time. That would just be a crisis of, of you know, time for the staff and management of this whole process. We need to get our volunteers in order. We need to bring the staff along with us as, as this is developed. So it will be more of a soft opening for the first phase of it. And then when some of the bugs, inevitable bugs, get worked out, then there'll be a chance for a bigger marketing campaign and a little more public face for it, which I think is a really smart way to do that. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty excited about it, actually. Mm -hmm. And just in speaking to people in the community about the idea of it, there's just a lot of support for this concept, you know? And so I, I it just feels really exciting for the foundation to have a, a really clear focus on this and the enthusiasm to carry it out. Mm -hmm. and so it'll be fun to see how this rolls out over the next months. Then we had a presentation from Gina uh, about the, um, Oregon City Reads or whatever. I can't remember what they're going to call I it. I can't remember either. <laughs> one but, city, one re uh, whatever. One, one city, city one, one book. book. One city, one book. Yeah. Right. And she came seeking funds from the foundation uh, to purchase books to be given to the participants and X number of books for X number of dollars. And we did support that concept. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be, she's really enthused about it. Yeah, she is. And uh, it seems well organized in terms of concept and, you know, rollout and ha she's considered impact on staff and other those kinds of things. And it feels really, again, really positive, you know, patron oriented kind of project that just the kind of thing that the foundation wants to get its teeth into. Yeah, and actually the foundation is going to support the author event. The what? The author event. So they committed yes. $6,500 for the author event. And what's really exceptional about this is they also voted 
to um, try to provide that kind of support annually. So as long as Gina can keep it up, which the plan is that it would be an annual thing, then the foundation would try to support the um, getting the author here if possible, depending on the author. So, yeah, and then there was some talk about the supporting of the books, but I think you guys, like said, let's just do the author part for now, and then if she needs help with the books, and we'll do the books later. Yeah, I forgot about the, yeah. that page, yeah. sorry. That's all right. My notes were a little sketchy. That's all right. <laughs> All right, thank you, Cynthia. Ken, uh, an update on the Friends of the Library? Well, they received the same pitch from Gina, <laughs> and uh, she asked for some, some money for, the, uh, for buying some books. She asked for $500. The, uh, the Friends felt that if she needed a little more down the road, some the funds would be available, mm -hmm. so they they thought it was a, a really good idea. Um, <clears throat> they seem to be doing quite well at the new bookstore. They're looking for other. Um, they need more book cases, <clears throat> and they're having to start rejecting books because they have no more space oh. for them. They're busy. And they're very, very busy. Um, they seem to be very happy. It's a nice. I just got up there a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Bought seven books. Good. <laughs> We've supported nice the library. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, they seem to seem to be doing well. Um, they seem to all work together quite well. And uh, it's kind of fun to sit in a meeting and listen to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have anything to add? No, just that their their new location seems to be working out really well. They're starting to miss some of their space because this is was bigger. I mean, it's more manageable because it's smaller, but they have so many donations that they're wishing they have a little bit more space. But, um, yeah. you know, I think for the size of group they are, this is a lot more sustainable for them. And it's turning, you know, as, as far as being, like, just that much closer to the library, it's they say they have a lot of... Um, more traffic, and they're earning just as much as they did in the old location. So, good. They may, you know, they were not receiving books for a while before they start mm -hmm. shut down the other. I think people were saving up for I them. think you're right. Mm, <laughs> yeah, good point. That's a good point, including us. <laughs> yes, including us. <laughs> so I guess I won't take them my books to them yet. Not, yeah, wait a little while. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Uh, any future agenda items or any unfinished business? Anything to add, Mo? Well, thank All you, right. Jeff. If there is no further business, uh, business the meeting is adjourned. Oh.